This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good evening, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for January 11, 2023. And in the news this evening, baby abducted from home in Spanish town. The Spanish town police are probing the abduction of a three-month-old baby on Tuesday afternoon. The infant, Roshane Malik Hall, was abducted from Horizon Park in Spanish town, St. Catherine, sometime after 5 p.m. A woman had reportedly visited the home and was given the baby to hold. A Toyota Probox come to the house and a girl get the baby and drive away, a relative told the news. A report was made to the Spanish Town Police last evening. Jamaicans reminded precious metals belong to the state. On the heels of this week's dashed hopes of riches from what was believed to be the discovery of gold in Hanover, the Mines and the Geology Division has stated that the Minerals Investing Act confers the right to all minerals to the state. It says that these include metals such as gold and silver or minerals containing copper, lead and iron, precious stones, carbonaceous minerals such as coal and some industrial minerals such as marble, high-impurity limestone and silica sand. While the mineral found in Hanover was not gold, but a pyrite, a substance of little economic value, members of the public are still being encouraged to report such discoveries to the Mines and Geology Division. The division says it will investigate the mineral occurrence and provide technical and economic recommendations towards its development. It adds that if a mineral deposit is developed, the law provides for a share of the royalties payable on the minerals mined to be allotted to the landowner. The division notes that the scientific curiosity of the public has led to many important discoveries that has added to the body of knowledge on the geology of Jamaica. Charities that engage with children's homes to be subject to greater scrutiny, says Morgan. Minister with Responsibility for Information Robert Morgan says all charities that engage with a children's home will be subjected to greater scrutiny. Mr. Morgan said background checks will also be implemented. The news follows the Office of the Children's Advocate's explosive report criticizing Rosalie Gage Gray, CEO of the Child Protection and the Family Services Agency, after several wards were exposed to American donor Culver Banks, who was punished for indecent involvement with a minor. In an interview with the news, Minister Morgan accepted that many people contribute to children's homes, whether they are from overseas, the diaspora, local individuals or corporate entities, so the government would not shut down outside help. But he admitted that since the Robangsa matter came to light in 2021, the ministry has been trying to ensure the vetting for charities to engage with homes is more robust. Well, there are many good people who contribute to the homes. There are many persons from overseas, persons in the diaspora, local persons, corporate companies who consistently try to help the home to, to survive. So it's not a case where we can say we will accept no outside help. What needs to happen and what we have been trying to do, Minister Favour or whatever, when I was there, is to, after the robotics came out, I came to the forum in 2021, is to make the, the vetting for charities who engage with home more robust. And we're going to have to put in background checks as well. Well, the most the minister can do is to hold people accountable and to ensure that government policy is implemented. Um, there is a role for the permanent secretary in the ministry. Um, there is a role for other state actors, such as the Office of the Children's Advocate, to ensure that we hold the agency accountable. The Children's Advocate is the only agency in, in Jamaica that has the mandate to, um, to, to assess and hold um, the CPSC accountable. And in this case, the, the advocate has done an amazing job in, in doing this investigation, a very detailed investigation. And what the government has to do is take the recommendations that she has given and try to implement them as soon as possible. Comp squeezed the elderly farmer's relatives in connection with his killing. Several relatives of an 82-year-old man who was found dead with his throat slashed have been questioned by police in connection with his killing. Stanford Baker, otherwise called the FUD, a farmer from Mount Plymouth in Leeds, St. Elizabeth, was found dead at his home by family members last Thursday. 
It was alleged that the elderly farmer might have been killed for money as a few days earlier he had sold several animals. It was also alleged that he had more than $30,000 on him when he was killed and that money could not be found. These allegations, however, have not been confirmed by the police as efforts to speak with the parish's top cop, Superintendent Kenneth Chin, have so far proven futile. But Senior Superintendent Stephanie Lindsay, head of the Corporate Communication Unit, the police information arm, confirmed that some of Baker's family members were questioned in connection with his killing. Some relatives were asked to come in, and they were questioned and allowed to go. There is no one in custody, but investigations continue, SSP Lindsay told the news. Police had reported that relatives last saw the elderly farmer about 10 a.m. on Wednesday, January 4. Having not seen him the following morning, they went in search of him around 9.30 a.m. He was reportedly discovered locked in a shed in his yard. The shed was forced to open, and the now deceased was seen in a pool of blood. The police were summoned, and on their arrival, the lifeless body of the deceased was found lying face down. During the processing of the scene, it was discovered that his throat was cut. The body was later removed and an investigation launched. Gully charged after allegedly shooting at a woman. A 29-year-old St. Elizabeth farmer has been charged with illegal possession of firearm and the shooting with intent following an incident in his district on Thursday, April 28, 2022. Charged is Jeffrey Smith, otherwise called the Gully, of Cornwall District in the parish. Reports from the Black River Police are that about 4.30 p.m., the complainant was walking along the roadway when Smith and other men armed with handguns approached her. An argument developed among them when Smith allegedly opened gunfire at the complainant, who managed to escape. A report was made to the police and on Sunday, January 11, Smith turned himself in and was charged following a question and answer session. His court date is being finalized. PSTEB suggests improving road environment to help reduce the crashes. The Public Safety and the Traffic Enforcement Branch says it will be continuing discussions with the National Works Agency and the municipal corporations this year to improve the road environment and help reduce the crashes. Assistant Commissioner of Police Gary McKenzie, head of PSTEB, says a lack of signs, poor road markings, and overgrowth of vegetation on roadways are of concern to the police. Addressing a town hall meeting hosted by the St. Catherine South Police Division, the senior officer said the poor road environment has contributed to crashes. A record 488 road fatalities occurred last year, with the National Road Safety Council warning that the figure could still rise when a final collision is done at the end of January. There's really a lot of signs um, on the road network in the division. All over Jamaica, yes, but since we are speaking about the St. Catherine South Division, there needs to be a lot more lines dividing roads. There needs to be a lot more speed signs. For example, when we look at the Municipal Boulevard, as it is known, um, there needs to be speed signs there. The Shire Main Road, that's another problem. The bushing of roadways, that is something that I know that my colleagues are working with the municipality to ensure that that is done. I think that it is high time that we also take a look at some roads that should be one way. Um, there's no sense in having all our roads in two ways, and we have a lot of traffic problems, especially during peak. So that is something that I expect the NWA to be looking at, and certainly other stakeholders, such as we, the police, the National Road Safety Council, the municipality, to be looking to ensure that our citizens have a convenient roadway and a safe one to traverse on. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.